On this week's episode, Holly Wars, the actor's strike back. The actor's strike is now affecting movies just starting to film, including in Massachusetts, as well as movies just about to come out, and a review of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. For The Hub on Hollywood, I'm James. I'm Jamie. We've got everything you need to know, including what's happening locally. Let's jump in. There's a lot. Let's go. All right, Jamie, after weeks of negotiation, it is official SAG-AFTRA actors are on strike. Kind of surprised, not so much surprised um, that the Mm. actors are now uh, forced to join the Writers Guild of America on their strike, uh, especially considering that there was this delay, this extension in negotiations for SAG-AFTRA. However, not everybody is as surprised. Some people were thinking that this extra 12 days or so of of extension talks, quote-unquote, quote, was just so the latest summer blockbuster movies can have more of a a longer run for promotion out there. Really quick, Mm -hmm. um, in full disclosure, Jamie and I, we are both members of the union. Of SAG-AFTRA. Yeah, though you are affected more than I am. I am not an actor. I am a broadcaster, a journalist, and so I can still work right now. However, Jamie, like you and many people that Mm -hmm. you know, uh, can't, can't cross the picket line. That's right. Uh, This is affecting television, film, and theatrical contracts. This is the first SAG strike since 1960. It's a very critical moment. Our uh, friends in the Writers Guild, they've been on strike for three months now, and many of the same issues that are affecting them are now affecting the actors. And I agree that this is a critical moment if And most of the issues are hinging on artificial intelligence, right, AI, and on the streaming services and the the revenues and residuals that actors and writers get from those productions. As we know, James, things are changing. Things are changing in a new season of technology and advancements. And whenever something like that happens, we need to sit down come to the table, figure it out so that everybody is getting an ac- an equitable slice of the pie, right? Of our great movie right. entertainment pizza pie. Um, but right now, that's not happening. With the writers in particular, they are getting close to zero residuals, even on the most successful, profitable shows. Yeah. You know, Netflix making tens of millions of dollars on shows like Orange is the New Black and all of their original content that they are creating Wednesday. And people who are writing these shows, creating these ideas, bringing it to us, can barely afford to live. They're getting pennies. They're literally getting checks for pennies for less than a dollar on residuals for shows that are making tens of millions of dollars, if not more, for the studios. And then you've got the issue of artificial intelligence and actors whose images are being scanned into computers and then used indefinitely in productions that they are not getting paid for. And all of a sudden you see your face in a, in a TV show that you never worked on, that you never got paid for, but your, your image is no longer your own. Um, and you right. maybe got paid for one day of work. So these are all issues that ultimately will make working in Hollywood unsupportable. You you won't be able to make a living wage. You won't be able to make a living as a, a, a below the line actor or, you know, someone who isn't in the top tier, the top echelon of the A-list actors. Even if you have lines, the day players, the the people who are the ninety-nine percent of people who work in Hollywood who are not the the one or two A-listers and the A-list director attached to something are not going to be able to make a living wage. And that's what they're fighting for. Yeah, a lot of people think of SAG or actors going on strike. They think of Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, these really rich and famous people. But for the most part, like you said, 99% of the actors out there are, are not really famous, really well known, and are not making a lot of money. And this really 
goes down to supporting the people who make movies feel real. And uh, it, it's a shame. One thing I was really impressed by, uh, Fran Drescher, who is the president of SAG-AFTRA, if you did not catch her speech about you know them going on strike, I highly recommend it. How they plead poverty, that they're losing money left and right when giving hundreds of millions of dollars to their CEOs. It is disgusting. Not only does she point to the fact that corporate entities are not only running Hollywood like this, it's, it's global, it's national, it's the working labor class who is always getting the short straw that are always being pushed further and further down while you have those at the very top keep making more money and keep demanding more while giving so much less. And so if you haven't listened to that speech of hers, uh, very rousing, incredible Fran Drescher, uh, she's talking about this. Bob Iger, Disney CEO, has been responding to the actor's demands. However, as of right now, it doesn't look like there's going to be any agreement reached in the very near future. Mm. So, of course, that puts movies that are in production to a standstill, including Deadpool 3, which was, I think, just in its first week of filming right now, starring, of course, Ryan Mm. Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. Yeah, which is something that was highly anticipated. I can't freaking wait. To watch this. Especially after Ryan Reynolds leaked that photo of him and Hugh Jackman in <laughs> costume on set yeah. and you see Wolverine in his actual like Wolverine yellow and black yellow. Uh, comic mm-hmm. accurate attire. So what a what a week to start. And uh, I know other mm. films like like Beetlejuice 2 was was kind of wrapping up production. They were going to start filming in Boston this upcoming week, but then that came to a standstill as well. So I know that I say that I can't wait for these projects, but you know what, James? I absolutely can wait until the people who are working on these projects, including our local actors who are on the sets of Beetlejuice 2 and The Perfect Couple and everything else that is filming uh, locally currently, um, get paid what they're worth, do not have their images stolen uh, and reused indefinitely. I can absolutely wait But it is frustrating for, as we mentioned, people who are already not making sufficient amount to support their livelihood to now have to wait for a resolution. As you mentioned, Beetlejuice 2 has been filming in Vermont. Um, They not only contending with a... uh, a writer strike and a actor strike now, but also earlier in the week, massive historic flooding in Vermont. So that that production has right. been go, going through a lot, but uh, they were supposed to be uh, filming throughout the week up in Vermont. Uh, they made it to about Wednesday when the contract expired. And after that, they, they shut down production. They've, they've stopped. So those sets that were built in Boston, in the Melrose neighborhood, that were supposed to be used uh, this week, this coming week, Monday, Tuesday, those are all now being taken down and dismantled, and everything is on hold until there is a resolution. So me, myself, James, I was on a set. I was on a set. Um the day that contracts were, uh, it, an agreement was supposed to be reached. And the entire time that we were there, we had a sag aftra representative who was with us, with all of uh, the background people and all of the actors, uh, updating us on negotiations. And it became pretty clear by the afternoon that um, we were not gonna be reaching a deal, that a strike was the most likely um, outcome. And so as a result, Uh, The production people, uh, the director and and, and the production tried to get as much done in that one day as they could uh, so that they weren't forcing anybody to work without a contract the following day. Uh, And then we did come to a strike. So it was uh, uh, very frustrating, but also we could see very necessary for for what was happening. So that's what's happening in in our local and national uh, acting world right now. You had mentioned Bob Iger, uh, the CEO of uh, Disney, commenting on what was happening. He called the idea of the strike disturbing. There's a level of expectation that they have that is just not realistic. 
James. He's not necessarily supportive, and that not that you would expect that from Disney, right? Right. Uh, it's all about the bottom line. It's all about the profits, right? So Bob Iger thinks that these strikes are disturbing. I say good. Uh, it should be disturbing to the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, uh, to these studios. And what they're trying to get away with is, is frankly, ludicrous. If you look at what, what is happening right now, um, and if the actors and the writers you know, don't kind of take a stand now, then it could mean people won't be able to have a sustainable future in working in, in Hollywood. Uh, so... Now I'm just getting into my own little, <laughs> jumping on my little soapbox. But yeah. to me, at least, it seems like this is, it's wage theft and identity theft, frankly. It's time for Hollywood to come to a halt. There's this background actor on Reddit, uh, Spencer for Hire 83 whose posts went viral. Uh, he says, I have worked as a background actor and I have been scanned on multiple productions. However, I was not informed by the production studio that they could use my image indefinitely. And that's this is one of the biggest bullet points that SAG-AFTRA is trying to make. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, you know, these studios want to scam background actors and they can use, they own their likeness forever and they can throw them into any movie, any scenario that they want and only pay them for that first day pay rate with the day that they got scanned. And he was saying that uh, he has, you know, worked on three productions over the past two years where he has been scanned uh, while getting into costumes. And then he was not informed by the studios that they could use his image likeness indefinitely and in perpetuity. And so not only is this messing up the opportunity for this person to get more background acting jobs and, and gigs, this hurts other people's chances of getting that background actor role and appearing in a movie of their own, maybe being in enough movies where they are are able to join the union. You mentioned Ben Affleck and May. Yeah, uh, Ben Affleck. Somebody, uh, one of my uh, people that I listen to, uh, Chris Stuckman. He is like he is an independent filmmaker and a movie reviewer. And he says, you know, he gave the scenario of the the wording is so vague that, for example, if the technology existed when Ben Affleck or Matt Damon were background actors in the movie, I think Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner, uh, when they filmed, they were in the background in one of those background scenes at Fenway Park. If that technology had existed and they had been scanned, then one, they would probably never be rehired by that same production studio. And if they had tried to go to another production studio, they likely, again, because the wording is so vague, it's possible that that studio would not be able to hire them because their likeness was already owned. And that could have stopped them from pursuing the acting career, that the, uh, the amazing acting career that they have today, not only being Oscar winners, but also, uh, he also said, you know, having the opportunity to write Good Will Hunting, denying Will, uh, Robin Williams the chance of winning his own Oscar for that film, and then everything down the line. So this is uh, dangerous. This is scary for, for people that are trying to start out. So, um, yeah, we are interested. If you are a filmmaker, if you are an actor, actress in Massachusetts, in New England, who is a part of the union, who is on strike, let us know. Reach out to us. We would love to have you on the podcast to talk about your experience, your thoughts, uh, your concerns, and, and your hopes uh, with how this turns out. Uh, you know, reach out to us mm -hmm. on social media. We are at Hub on Hollywood on Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram. TikTok, everywhere you can find us. So we, we are very interested in hearing about that. And speaking of AI, James, a friend of the show, Nicole Johan Rand, um, a prolific local actress uh, here in the Boston area, um, had exactly this happen to her. She was one of many people that were digitally captured for the movie, I Want to Dance with Somebody, which was shot in Boston during the COVID pandemic. Part of their explanation um, or justification for having us digitally scanned was that we couldn't have those big crowd scenes, right? We couldn't have those big concerts and have all of these people bunched together. So a lot of the, the local background people were digitally scanned. And Nicole says that she was not aware that this company could then take her image, reuse it, and she has since found herself, her face, in, in a show that she did not perform in, that she was never paid for, but was digitally inserted into. Crazy. Um, so 
stick around, uh, follow the Hub on Hollywood. We will have her interview a little later this week, um, but it's definitely one that you do not want to miss. No, absolutely not. And one last thing I want to add on to this. Um, you know, again, uh, we know that the big time, big name actors out there may not be directly feel the pain of the strike, a strike that is necessary. But there are many actors that are throwing their support for the entire union and the entire members because they know all the background actors and these smaller time, you know, quote unquote, lower level actors. Um, they need a better contract to make a, to make a, a livable wage. And so uh, the cast of Oppenheimer, they're showing their support uh, by actually walking out during the London premiere. Last week, Thursday, uh, director Christopher Nolan, Killian Murphy, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, and the other stars were on the red carpet promoting uh, the highly anticipated Oppenheimer film. And then when they got the news that the strike was announced, they stopped they walked out of the event, and um, I think that's a great show of solidarity. But they did answer uh, quite a bit of questions uh, on that UK premiere red carpet. And so we do have those interviews lined up. And because, again, like Oppenheimer, like Barbie, the two most highly anticipated movies of the year, I am so excited for this movie. So even though they can't promote this movie <laughs> any longer, I would love to promote this movie. Without further ado, here are some uh, interviews with the cast of Oppenheimer at the UK premiere. <laughs> Chris has said that he's the most important man that ever lived. It was a huge role, huge responsibility. You know, my favorite director, um, some of the best actors in the world. It was, I, you know, I had to say yes. All my experience with Chris has always been real sets. Um, so you experience it as the, as the characters would. It's a more visceral and uh, honest response I think you get. And it's, it's less like a movie and more like an experience. Well, I mean, you're hearing what people are saying about the film. It literally is a cinematic experience. They're using the M word, masterpiece. That doesn't matter. I want to be entertained. I want to be thrilled. I want to be transported. And obviously, I mean, Chris Nolan and IMAX are kind of synonymous at this point. So do yourself a favor. Check it out big, big format. What Chris gave, I think, all of us was this, an amazing script and an amazing direction. Like, he just... His notes are so precise and incisive and just spot on, and he just really makes everything better. So it's just a thrill to be in a movie with him, and, and, and I'm really glad Universal's putting it out. I've had a lot of success in my career with Universal. I love everybody over there, and I'm glad they're still putting big, serious movies in the theater. It's very cool. Yeah, I don't know if there's any director who does the kind of grand scope and scale along with like the great human drama the way Chris does. Like All of his movies work on, on really every level and it's so hard to do that. I mean, the people who've been able to do that historically, like you know it's like Jim Cameron, Steven Spielberg, like you know it's like you, you can list them on one hand and, and Chris is just at the height of his abilities right now. So it was very cool to get the call. Well, it's a Chris Nolan movie, so uh, you want to see it on the biggest screen possible. I mean, that's how he shoots it. He shoots it with that in mind. You know, in this one, he invented black and white IMAX film for this, for, for, like for some of the sequences in this. It's like something you've never seen anywhere before. He's just, you got to see it on the biggest screen you can. And Oppenheimer director Christopher Nolan has also said that he will absolutely not work on another film until the strike ends. Um, so it's it's so important to have you know the the big names, the people who move Hollywood right, um, supporting uh, the the actors and the writers. So hopefully that makes a difference. Yes. From Oppenheimer and the explosion, right? The 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 nuking of the Hollywood industry right now uh, with these dueling uh, strikes to another movie that's coming out this weekend that we are so excited about is is Barbie. Yeah, Barbie's coming out uh, this Friday, same weekend as Oppenheimer, going head to head. That's right. Who will come out victorious? Bombs or babes? I don't know. <laughs> um, like that. But I do know, James, that uh, I, I am going to be attending a screener uh, later this week. So we will have a, a full review and um, everything review. you need to know about Barbie. Barbie, a non-spoiler review about whether or not Barbie is going to be worth your time and money. I highly suspect it will. Oh, yeah. Um, they will also be competing, even though the, everyone's looking at the head-to-head -head of Barbie versus Oppenheimer. There is a third player 
still in the game, and that is Ethan Hunt, a.k.a. Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. It came out last week. You know, it's funny because there is a real feud, and again, not a real quote-unquote feud, but there is a real feud uh, with uh, Tom Cruise and Oppenheimer. That's because the movie Oppenheimer is coming out exclusively on IMAX theaters, they got the rights to have pretty much have the summer run uh, of all IMAX theaters. Tom Cruise only had a week and a half. And so he was really bummed saying like, you know what? You know, because his movies, as we know, are made for the big screen, are made to be viewed and seen in person. And so when he found out that he would only have a week and a half run um, in IMAX, he was very, very disappointed. And one person you do not want to disappoint is Tom Cruise. Cruise because he will find you. He will run across the country to find he you. He will find you <laughs> and he will jump on your couch. He will jump on he your, will couch. Ruin your couch. He will, he will ruin <laughs> the upholstery. But um, yeah, so uh, even though uh, uh, um, Dead Reckoning Part 1 has been in theaters for a week and a half, I still feel like people, if they're not into the heaviness of Oppenheimer, if they're not into the glam of Barbie, I still think Mission Impossible has a good chance to, um, to pull viewers from either one of those movies but i do think as i did say Mm. this is one movie that you need to watch in the movie theater tom cruise does not make movies for the streaming service for netflix amazon prime Mm -hmm. paramount plus he makes them so you fill those seats and this is one of those movies where you need to fill the seat as i mentioned in my previous non-spoiler review this would be a you know pretty much of a non-spoiler but um I, I really enjoyed this movie. This is two hours and 43 minutes long, but for me, it flew by fast. And as I said previously, just as fast as Tom Cruise does flying down a mountainside chasing after a runaway train. <laughs> This is really good. I mean, uh, this I won't say this is the best Mission Impossible film in the franchise, but it's definitely on the higher end. Great stunts, great acting, great additional new cast members joining the IMF team. So I highly recommend this film. This movie, even though it does fall into the cliche of we're looking for this MacGuffin, everybody's after this MacGuffin, it does play with the villain of sorts. And I think it is very timely with today's situation that we're looking at because the main villain of this of this movie is AI is artificial intelligence uh, this super Ooh, weapon that very can, timely very timely and so I think Tom Cruise knows the future he can read the future because um, this is hitting <laughs> at a perfect time when everyone is is a, is, a, is worried about artificial intelligence both in the public sector uh, and both in the movie industry but um, great action the what there is one I mean not a big spoiler but one problem I have with this film is that you know leading up to this the marketing all around this new film was Tom Cruise is jumping off a cliff from a motorcycle and using a parachute to to dive and it's one of the most dangerous stunts ever done by an actor and yes that is true however I think they publicized it so much with behind the scene video and shots and interviews and clips and everything you expect it to be like one of the most impressive stunts in the entire film when in, in actuality it it lasts for a very short amount of time it's kind of like here it is and, and it's gone right there like okay i pretty much what i saw in the trailers what i saw in commercials what i saw in behind the scenes stuff you see it in the film and so i was kind of disappointed at the same time though i think the movie is saved by other amazing stunts that are if not as impressive a bit more impressive than that that famous uh, off the cliff ride but i watch this i i recommend mm. you watch this film run to your local movie theater pull your best tom cruise impression <laughs> and run to the nearest imax while you still can to see this uh, on the imax screen mm. or if you've got one of those um those parachute things that he used to go yeah. down the the, the hillside those like take one of those glider um, sorts thingy yeah right yeah how is he alive that's my question. <laughs> he says How he is wants Tom to keep Cruise doing this. Still yeah. alive. He says he wants to keep doing this because because he recently talked about uh, Harrison Ford and Harrison Ford is in his 80s and he says that he wants to continue doing this in his 80s. So <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Tom Cruise is but very he, skilled, he's very careful, yeah. but how careful how, how long will that luck last? I don't know. But I think he wants to go out that way. Harrison Ford's stunts are not nearly as dangerous first no. of all. And um and Harrison is just going to live forever, and he's just handsome and 
my secret <laughs> imaginary boyfriend. There's no comparison to Harrison no. Ford, okay? You can only dream of being Harrison Ford, Tom Cruise. Yeah, you hear um, that, Tom Cruise? <laughs> well, <laughs> let us know what you think. Have you he's watched... He's never going to be on the show now. He's going he's gonna to find us. Um, but uh, let us know what you think. Have you seen Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1? Uh, comment down below about your review. Have you seen Harrison Ford's Dial of Destiny, which isn't doing so great at the box office right now? Uh, let us know what you think about that. <laughs> sadness. Sadness. Sadness indeed. Um, Jamie, I'm also sad to say that usually this is the part of the episode where we thank everybody for tuning in to follow us at Hub on Hollywood on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and everywhere else. And to also stick around after the credits because of local casting calls. However, we can't do that last part because of the strike. Thanks to the SAG after strike happening right now production is at a standstill. There are still some commercials that are being done using non-union talent. Um, That is still happening, but right now, um, film, television, you know, and the big epics, the big epic movies with the A-list stars and the A-list directors all coming to a standstill here in Hollywood East, Hollywood West, and everywhere in between. Um, So until... We reach a decision yeah. Uh, until they reach an agreement and the strike comes to an end. Casting calls on the Hobbit Hollywood are also on, on strike. strike. <laughs> Let us know. And again, <laughs> if you are an actor in New England, in Massachusetts, reach out to us. Shoot us an email. I will put a link somewhere down below because we will love to hear your experience, hear your thoughts, and, um, and you know, just find out how hard the strike is affecting you. But not only that, how hard what some of these changes if we did not get in, uh, in these in these negotiations how that would affect you how would having your body scanned and used forever without any more residual or pay how would that affect you let us know what you think reach out we are the hub on hollywood we are here to talk about you and the local movie industry thank you for joining us thank you for being with us best of luck and we'll see you on the picket lines <laughs> We'll see you then. Until next time, I'm James. I'm Jamie. Bye. Bye.